Let's start actually with President Trump yesterday from the Oval Office and then again today, this morning, he tweeted out and he said, you know, we've done a pretty good job with these storms so far and we're really prepared for this. From what you know of what the dealings are with FEMA and the various organizations there, are we ready for this? Uh, FEMA is, uh, it has good leadership. Uh, I do believe that you're always looking for ways to improve it, but, uh, but I can tell you that FEMA has good leadership. They have a good team put together. Uh, they have the resources, and everybody at the federal level is committed that when you have a major issue like this coming on and the possibility of a major catastrophe, everybody works together side by side. It's not Republican or Democrat. You simply focus on getting the help to those folks that need it. And in this particular case, what you can do in advance in terms of getting teams ready to go in, you pre-position your assets, your supplies. Uh, you check to make sure that you've got the manpower to go back in because you know that there's going to be damage done. And that's exactly what FEMA is doing right now. So that's a step in the right direction. It's what you would expect them to do. Okay, Senator, I want to turn to the exception of trade and particularly NAFTA to begin with because there are reports now that there's a delegation headed back to the United, to the United States from Mexico trying to negotiate things where we've heard that Canada still is pending. Uh, is this going to get done and can it do get done without Canada? I actually had a conversation with, with the president uh, last week. He understands how serious this is for farmers and ranchers in the upper Midwest. He understands that they're counting on him to get something done. He really does believe that they're going to have a better trade deal when they're all said and done with it. And he's hoping for patience on the part of producers. When I talk to producers in the upper Midwest, they say, look, we know the trade deals aren't perfect. We understand the president's fighting for us. We appreciate that. We just hope he gets it done sooner rather than later. It was very good news to find out that uh, uh, Mexico has come to terms with the United States. They are a major trading partner, particularly for our ag products, corn number one in the nation, soybean meal number two for, for the United States, and cattle number three in the United States. So they're a major uh, 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 player for us with regard to our products. Canada is apparently very optimistic about the way things are going. I know the foreign minister for Canada was in the United States. They're excited. They appear to be optimistic about getting a deal done. Uh, Mr. Lighthizer has been, has been meeting uh, 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 on a regular basis with the foreign minister of Canada. And as I understand it, they're going, she's going back home to visit uh, with the prime minister to see if uh, the proposals that are on the table will work. So I think we're getting closer. We're being optimistic, but it would be great to get this done and get it behind us and get back to trading with these very good trading partners that we've got. Producers in the upper Midwest will tell you, we didn't have perfect deals in the first place. And if the president can make them better, if they can get something uh, set out longer term, I think that'd be really good for producers, and that would help to continue the growth in our economy. And finally, Senator, let's turn to China and trade with China. There's just news breaking now, Bloomberg is reporting, as others have, that in fact the United States, and particularly Secretary Mnuchin of the Treasury Department, is reaching out to the Chinese to get the talks going at a high level once again. Do you know anything about that? Have you heard that directly? I had the opportunity to visit with the uh, Chinese uh, ambassador several weeks ago, and just a, uh, a group of us got together with them and, and visited. They have an interest in moving forward. They understand our concern with regard uh, uh, to intellectual properties. Uh, they'd like to find a way to resolve it, but they're also asking for our understanding that within their culture, they've really never recognized intellectual properties as being a right before. And so this is a challenge for them internally. But at the same time, uh, they need to come around to the world view on the importance of intellectual properties. So for us, we hate to see soybeans as a, as a, as a trading chip uh, in South Dakota right now. That's a major commodity for us. And uh, for the United States, uh, China was a primary source for, for the, uh, uh, where we would move those products. In fact, they would account for nearly 25 percent of our entire crop. So we'd love to see a deal completed with China, but we also understand how important it is to get the issues surrounding intellectual properties taken care of as well. But once again, it's optimistic. We think the Chinese understand the need for their ability to be able to access the United States soybean market. Uh, they're a huge part of it, but they need that in their country. They don't produce enough soybeans themselves uh, to feed the livestock that they need to feed their nation.